What's up everybody? This is Greg and I'm going to do a video today about cutting the cord. I'm going to tell you uh, everything I know, everything I've learned over the past few years and uh, tell you about my setup. I'm very happy uh, with my setup. I feel like it's pretty complete and uh, a bunch of friends from work asked me about my setup so I thought this would be a great time to do a video on this topic and uh, show you end to end what I can do, what it can do um, and what pieces are required, how much it costs if you have wanted to cut the cord but worried that there's too, too many moving parts or it's too complicated then this is the video for you and uh, I'll show you it's really not that bad you just need uh, a few pieces of equipment it winds up being less expensive than purchasing a TiVo with way more functionality I can um, watch with my present setup I can watch two different TV shows at the same time in, in different rooms or I can uh, record two shows at the same time I can play those shows back um, in different locations around my house. I can play them on my iPad or my kid's tablet. Uh, I can play it at my phone, on my phone, or from anybody else's house. Um, and uh, yeah, basically you get uh, watching live TV, recording shows, um, DVR capability, and remote viewing. So here's, here's some of the pieces involved to make this happen. <clears throat> And again, this is uh, my setup. There are a lot of ways to do this. This is pretty easy. Once you get this set up, it just works. And that's what a lot of people are looking for. This is the uh, the core component here, the NVIDIA Shield TV. This is uh, a fantastic little device. It's, uh, it's a great gaming console as well. It runs the Android operating system, just like, uh, just like a phone, but it's Android TV, so it's a little bit different. And uh, this one comes with uh, that particular remote. There's a, there are other models. Um, addition here, we can probably see. Yeah, there's one that comes with this uh, gaming controller. Um, a side benefit of this model is that if you have an NVIDIA graphics card in your in a PC in your house, uh, even if it's not the newest model, you can actually stream your any games that you have on your PC. You can stream them to this NVIDIA Shield <clears throat> and you can play with the controller. So if you have PC games that uh, work with the controller, you can play them in the living room and it works really well. But <clears throat> anyway, most people will go with this model. Now this is uh, a, a very small little unit and it plugs into the back of your, your TV, of course. And it's really easy to navigate with the controller. If your TV is a relatively recent model, um, I've got a Samsung. I'm making this video in December of 2017. I think mine is a probably a 2015 model, and it has um, CEC, I believe is what that's called, uh, Consumer Electronics Control. Maybe I might be wrong about that. <laughs> You'll see that in the menu. CEC. I can actually use my Samsung TV remote. Um, and it will control the shield. So I typically only have to use one remote for everything. And I didn't have to do any programming for that. If your TV has CEC, you just turn that on and it works. Uh, so anyway, this is the device that will do everything for you. It runs uh, Plex, and Plex is the software that does everything, and I'll show you that. But basically, to get in the door here, you're going to need a uh, you're going to need a $150 device and this this thing has a great processor and a great ram you don't need a pc at all this will do everything for you so you get that and then you're going to want storage space because uh, out of the box this thing only has a few gigs you fill it up pretty quick if you're recording tv shows so you want to get one of these uh, a usb external hard drive get one that's usb 3.0 <clears throat> that's probably all you're going to find today i've got a two terabyte in mine Depending on how much you want to record, get a bigger drive if you need it. Um, I've got plenty of space and a ton of content on my two terabyte drive. So the, the Shield console with a USB hard drive will sit in your living room attached to your TV. Now, what you're going to pick up TV channels with is uh, one of these devices. These are wonderful. Uh, Silicon Dust makes them. This is the model that I have. It is called the HD Home Run Extend. Mine is a two tuner box. Now, right now on Amazon, it's $180. I only paid $120 uh, when I bought it um, back in 2015. So I'm sure the uh, the price goes up and down. Look right here, 
uh, I missed this earlier. There's a newer model of this. It looks like the newer model is 157 bucks. <clears throat> so anyway, about another $150 right now for an HD home run device. Let's see if we can get a picture of the, I guess it's not going to show us a picture of the back of it. This thing has um, a coaxial uh, input on the back of it, just like you, uh, yeah, here you go. <clears throat> this is on the model I have. This is where you screw the antenna into to pick up uh, off over the air broadcast, and then you're going to need to attach it to your network, and then that's a power adapter. So this little guy is responsible for picking up the uh, over the air broadcast from all your big networks, so uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, Fox, um, I think I think those are the big five that you'll pick up. And if you're if you're in a uh, in the city, man, you can pick up. Some people pick up fifty or sixty channels with this thing. Most of the shows that you care about, football games and stuff like that, are going to be on those five networks. I uh, am in the woods, and I have tried those uh, <clears throat> leaf antennas, the things you can pay fifty bucks for at Best Buy or Walmart that are flat. Uh, Moho makes one that's very popular. Amazon has a, a good one that's cheaper. I have had no luck with those things. I get really spotty, only pick up a couple of channels. I've tried a bunch of different antennas. Finally, what I had to do to get some decent performance was buy a Yagi. Um, Y-A-G-I. That's not a brand. That's just a style. I think it's a, a Jap named after the Japanese guy who invented it. I have one of these. <clears throat> Mine looks about like that. And it is in my uh, attic. I did not want to mount it to my roof because uh, that would be an eyesore. Thankfully, I have a pretty big open attic. <clears throat> so I just put it, yeah, mine's very similar to that. I just literally hung mine on a microphone stand. I was in a band for a while, so I had a microphone stand up in the attic. I mounted the antenna to that, and I just, uh, oh, I forgot. I used an app on my phone. And, uh, gosh, it was a couple of years ago when I did this, so I can't remember. There was an app on my phone that, uh, it was in the Google Play Store. I have an Android, the Samsung phone. And it gave me the coordinates for the local TV stations. And because of where I live, everything is southeast of me, except NBC, which was due north. So everything else is southeast, but then NBC was north, and I wanted to get both for uh, football games primarily. <clears throat> I decided to point the antenna southeast, and the way I did it is I actually laid my phone. Uh, once I used that app to find the local channels, it gives you the direction from where you are because it uses your GPS. I used the built-in compass, uh, the compass app, and literally set my phone on top of the antenna and then rotated the antenna until my phone showed that I was pointed to the coordinates uh, southeast of me where all the TV stations are. And then I just, you know, put my phone and headed back downstairs to test. Now, um, I used coax that was already in the wall. I already had a jack in the living room. I, I cut that jack, went to uh, Lowe's and bought a little coax uh, kit for 20 or $30, put my own ends and a crimped a cable. And then I screwed that into the antenna that is in my attic. You know, it can't see through the walls or anything like that. Went downstairs and hooked it up to my TV and did a scan and was very pleased. This big Yagi antenna, I mean, it, it should work. It's huge, right? So <clears throat> anyway, that picks up a lot of stations. So I uh, screwed that into the silicone dust. Um, you go down and th there's instructions that come with this. You use some software on your computer. And what's cool about this thing is you can uh, you can watch TV from your computer and you can actually set up DVR and things like that on the PC, but I find it's it's way uh, hands-off if you use a Shield and Plex, and that way you don't have to worry about patches and updates and reboots and other software interfering, blah, blah, blah. You just, you just get it working and you leave it alone. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, the big antenna screws into the silicone dust, uh, which you set up on your PC. All you do is, you know, let it uh, detect the channels and make sure you're picking up the channels that you want. That's that's an optional step. You can do that on the Shield, but I find it's easier to do it with the PC. Now, you are going to want this connected uh, to an Ethernet cable. So what's great about this is <clears throat> the antenna doesn't have to hook into the Shield 
anywhere near your television. As long as uh, you have a coax cable near your, you know, if your router or if you have a switch in another room, uh, this thing does not need to be close to the shield or close to a TV. You can stick it in a closet as long as you can screw the coax from the antenna into it and plug it into your network, then you are good to go. Um, this thing is transferring about for over the air HD TV. It'll actually tell you how many megabits. It's around 15 megabits uh, per second for full HD 1080p broadcast. So <clears throat> you're going to need at least uh, 30 you know, megabit speed. I have not tried using this over one of those um, wireless uh, bridges in case you want to put it somewhere else and put it on your Wi-Fi network. There's a box you can buy called a Wi-Fi bridge that will let you plug a hard line into this thing and then this thing connects to your Wi-Fi. <clears throat> as long as you have more than 30 megabits of rock solid signal, that would probably work fine. So uh, anyway, antenna goes into the silicone dust, which uh, then, because you have a, a USB hard drive plugged into your shield, which runs Plex, <clears throat> you are going to want to buy the lifetime membership for Plex. I don't think it's always 120 bucks. That's what I paid for it. It was during a promotion. So I don't know if they've changed the price to that um, permanently, but huge worthwhile investment. That's all the <clears throat> that's all the purchasing that you have to do is what I just mentioned. The shield, the HD home run, uh, the Plex membership and, and antenna. And you may not have to spend much on an antenna if you're in an area that picks up picks up TV. Now this is Plex. I had this up when I first uh, started the video because I wanted you to see what it looks like. So Everything, uh, when you install Plex on your, uh, actually Plex is already on your shield. When you activate it by going to the Plex website and paying for the lifetime membership, this is what you get. You get program guide for life. A lot of the DVR programs I've seen uh, require a monthly subscription to have the, uh, pardon me, to have the um, TV guide. It doesn't look like the traditional TV guide, you know, where you have the grid. Apparently that is a patented thing they have to pay for. So instead, the way this works is it shows you what's on right now. <clears throat> it shows you what's getting ready to come on. New episodes tonight. Uh, the only thing I'm recording today is uh, football. And then it also has uh, categories where you can look for uh, movies that are coming on. And this is great because you can see everything that's coming on. Um, and, and like I said, you pay for this once and it just continually works. You can do this via an app on your iPhone or Android phone, or you can do it from any computer through this uh, web interface. And uh, let's see. Um, you know, nothing good comes on broadcast TV. <laughs> let's say you wanted to record The Nutty Professor. You just click on it and then click record and boom it's done and uh, what's great is everything is going to be recorded to that uh, external hard drive that you purchased and what's cool is the shield actually is accessible over the network so um, you can access it from another computer on your network and you can you know download those movies and save them if you want to copy them off to another device put them on a tablet and take them with you that kind of thing but anyway, so this lets you uh, record any TV shows um, and uh, you can actually make categories. I have used Plex. Plex is awesome. It doesn't just uh, watch, you know, let you watch live TV uh, and record live TV. It lets you store your movies. I have uh, some videos for my, uh, for my little girl. I went to the Walmart $5 bin and got some uh, animated Bible story videos, and I've got a lot of those. You can, um, you know, rip your DVDs or Blu-rays if you if you want to do that and access them from here. Anyway, uh, so it's it's a great place to put all of your media, and then you can access all of your media from, like I said, a tablet or a phone when you're on the go. And uh, anyway, it just works great. That's my setup. I noticed that in the most recent updates to Plex. 
they actually offer the option to uh, cut commercials. And I am testing that for the first time today with the NFL games that I'm recording. Something new they've added is once you um, once you start recording a show, then you can... It, it was up until recently that if you recorded a show, you couldn't watch any part of it until it finished recording, which, is, which was a bummer, right? Because you probably just want to kick off a show and wait 20 minutes and then watch it so you can skip the commercials. Well, they've just added that not long ago as of uh, December 2017. So that's pretty cool. And I actually have a Plex uh, upstairs and I have one downstairs too. And there are two pieces of Plex. There's the server and there's the client. The client is free, but the server is the thing that lets you do the DVR and get the program guide and all of those things. Otherwise, it's just a player. So you can get it for free. Uh, it comes on the shield already. So you can play with it and use it. You just won't be able to do the advanced things like DVR and all that. But anyway, so I have a Plex uh, in my basement uh, living room as well. And what's great is it can talk to the Plex that is upstairs that has the hard drive. So I can watch all of my recorded shows uh, like that. So there are Plex clients for just about every device out there. Uh, if you have an Xbox, uh, I've got an old Xbox 360. It works. Um, we've got a Fire Stick on one of our TVs. I believe it has a Plex client too. That's the great thing about Plex is it's pretty universal. So you can access your content from anywhere. Anyway, uh, I think that's long enough for this video. I hope that's really helpful. We went through the pieces that you need to buy. And if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll help you out if I can. Thanks for watching.